Well, for more on the so-called Brexit, I spoke with Callum Pickering, senior UK economist at Berenberg. I began by asking him how important the referendum is in the mayoral race. Well, first part of the reason that Boris Johnson has been so outspoken is he probably expects to become prime minister if Britain were to exit the European Union, but that in itself is a matter aside. The Brexit issue has featured quite heavily in the London mayoral elections. It's really a, a race of two horses. On the centre left, we have Khan. Uh, he is for the UK remaining in the European Union. And on the centre right, the Conservative candidate, Zach Goldsmith. He would be the uh, follow-up to Boris Johnson. Now, London, after Scotland, is the most pro-EU region in the UK. So far, the polls suggest that the centre-left candidate Khan, who is for the UK staying in the EU, is ahead of Zach Goldsmith. So it suggests that Brexit is featuring in the voters' minds when it comes to choosing candidates come Thursday, the mayoral elections. You have about two million Brits living in other parts of the EU. So what does this mean for these people who are actually living in other parts of the European Union? What happens to them? That's a good question. Uh, remember, if the UK votes to leave on June 23rd, it doesn't mean a Brexit happens the day after. There has to be some period of negotiation between the UK and the European Union. That should take, at the very least, two years with then which a formal Brexit happens. This question will feature in that two-year negotiation period. I think the most likely outcome is that just as it would be for non-UK but European Union citizens living in the UK, you would essentially stay where you are. I think there would be some agreement that European citizens that live in the UK would be able to remain in the UK. So would UK citizens that lived in the EU27. They would also be allowed to remain in the EU27. I think on that issue, it would be fairly amicable between the UK and the EU. Now, when we look at some of the momentum, you, as you mentioned, some of the citizens, but what about economists? We're actually seeing a growing number now pro-Brexit. So is that gaining momentum? Is that something that we can expect to continue? Uh, the economic battle between the economists who think a, uh, an exit from the European Union would be bad and those that think it would be good has been going on for some time. I, I would say that there's no real momentum being gained from the Leave campaign. Uh, the polls have been fairly stable now for some months at around a one in three chance of an exit. Uh, what I would say is that we have now more economists arguing for the UK to leave, that just a couple of weeks ago we had President Obama speaking about his views, whether or not he thought the UK should remain in the European Union. Of course, he warned against it quite vehemently. What it does is it engages people. It mobilizes voters just to consider what they think on the issue. And I actually think that the more people we have both on the in and the outside of the argument debating this in the run-up, it will increase the participation rate. And what we've seen so far, where we've had an increased participation rate in the polls, that is there are fewer undecided. It seems to show that the Remain camp gains an additional lead. So what this could actually do is increase the chance of the Remain pushing ahead simply because it mobilizes more people to vote. And Callum, let's look at some of the other voices that are weighing in on this issue. We have the IMF warning that a Brexit could create severe global damage. And even the US Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, is saying that the June vote could loom large over their decision to raise interest rates. So just how big of an impact do you think even the idea of the vote is having on the global economy? I would say that a Brexit is the single biggest economic and political risk for Europe in 2016. At the moment, the Brexit fear seems to be adding to the existing political risk. That is, rising populism across Europe, the migration crisis in Europe, the real possibility now that there could be a President Trump in the US. Brexit adds to this political risk. What I would say is, a Brexit is not the most likely outcome. We see a 35% risk of a Brexit. That's a one in three chance of a Brexit. It's broadly in line with the polls. More likely than not, the UK will vote pragmatically and that will be to stay in the European Union. I think the real risk will come if the UK votes out and 
people really start to digest the consequences of this. I think there's a real possibility that lending to the UK by global financial markets dries up quite quickly following a June 23rd vote if that vote is a Brexit and that will be a consequence that the Bank of England will be really the only game in town to deal with.